so I got my son this game for Christmas and it's been driving me nuts since the first time I used it. So the crux of the game is, well it doesn't really matter what the crux of the game is, it's, got a, it's faulty out of the box. The whole idea is you're supposed to catch the bear when it comes out of the, the cave and it, you would expect that to be a surprise. But it's not a surprise, so I can push this. It's going to jump now. There's no surprise there because you can pick up on the tension in the front of the, the belly. It's going to jump now. So you would think a bear coming out of a cave should be a surprise, but it's not a surprise at all. And you can't win this game against a nine-year-old when they know the bear is going to jump out. It's going to jump out. Then you're supposed to catch it. So I can't cope with that. So I'm going to design this. So it's not going to be detectable that it's going to bounce out. So here are the inner workings of this device. It's got a thing here which gets pushed up and down, which just releases these little, uh, can't really see them, but there's two little grippers in there. The grip into the bottom of the bear. The bear's got a really strong spring in it which gives it the motion to push out if they just clamp in. To its credit, it is semi-random, so if you look in here, it's got these little bits of plastic inside the ring, and as this rotates around, because it's got a gear mechanism, the gap between these um, sections gives it a different amount of times it'll pop up. So there is seven, eight, and nine, so each gap is 7, 8, or 9. So it'll go 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 4 each time you push it. Kind of random, but not really good enough. So the reason that you feel the push is because as this is rotating round, you can feel it as it's trying to push it down. And that's the feeling you get on the front button. But that gives it a dead giveaway that the bear's about to pop out. So the problem I have here is the uh, amount of room I've got in the bottom of this toy to uh, fit in all the bits and pieces I want. And I've got uh, in my mind a few electronic bits and pieces I want to try and use. And I need to try and cram them in here. And it's going to be a bit hard drawing this whole thing in Fusion 360. Especially when it's only for a grudge, right? So what I tried to do is use a photometry app to scan it in using a phone. And this is how it came out. And looking at this you're thinking, well that looks... It looks pretty good, but uh, it's because it's got all the colours included. Once you import it into Fusion, the story is a little bit different. So as you can see here, it's it's a bit of a hot mess. Uh, it's an accurate hot mess though. So these little holes where everything sort of lines up, uh, if I've measured those, they're, they're about in the right place. So I can design it kind of and sort of fit things in to try and get the, everything to fit in the right place. So I'm just going to draw, and draw it all up and see what we come up with. Okay, so fast forward a few hours and here is my solution. Uh, I'm using a Pi Pico. I've had this Pi Pico in my toolbox for over a year now. I've not found a single use for it, but it's ideal for this project because I'm going to be using a lithium battery in there, 3.7 volts. The Arduino is I normally use uh, 5 volts, so it's never going to work. And I don't want to put a booster circuit in here. I don't have enough room as it is. So I've got the Pi Pico here. I've got the... Um, over here I've got the charging unit, so I just plugged it in. The charging wires are going to route up here on special plugs, so I can just plug it in from the bottom. And then over here I've got a motor driver. I got a bit lazy here, I could have just used a transistor, right? But this is a motor driver head kicking around. Um, so I'm just going to use that to uh, drive the motor. If I drive the motor straight from the Pico, it'll, it'll burn it out. And here's my DC motor. Uh, so to run it all, I've got a gear underneath here, so we'll just have a look underneath. So here's the gear, uh, this is all going to be FDM printed, so it'll be interesting to see how long the gears last for. So this gear spins around, and you can't quite see the zoom in. It's got a bit of a profile, so once it hits this peak when it's spinning around, it'll push down those um, noggins on the top, and activate the bear to fly out. So I'll print this all up, and see what it looks like. So here's my solution, here's the motor driver here. Uh, the Pico, the charging circuit for the lithium battery, uh, power switch when I want to turn it on and off, use my DC motor, and a little charger port here so I can charge it from underneath. You can't see any wires because I've got them all 
tucked away neatly in these little pastes in here because I don't want to get them all caught up inside the machine when it's uh, working. Here's my motor and here's my gear to um, drive it all. And you can see there's slight risers there for pushing down the uh, release mechanism. So it just tucks in there and now I'm going to put it in the bottom of the beer. So there it all is in the situation. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy to put the cover on the bottom. You're not you're going to know any different apart from the fact it works properly. You know, we're thinking well, that's a lot of money to get that going. All these parts, hardware parts in total, will be less than ten dollars to make this modification. So I'll put the um, these parts are really easy to find as well. They're just off the shelf parts. So I'll put the file for this uh, up available on um, one of my sites. And you can do the same, all you got to do is get these boards, so just a few dollars. But we'll test it out to make sure it works. So here's our moment of truth. I've programmed the Pico so it picks a number between 3 and 9. At the beginning of the video I mentioned that the other device was between um, 7 and 9. So uh, we've got more options. And of course you can't feel when it's about to fire off. So we'll give it a go. So three we're in, we're in the fun zone now so any time between now and nine four five cool it works I'll just give it one more go just to make sure it doesn't pick the same number again one two three and here we go <coughs> great on to a winner that's about it for this video. If you're into making elaborate solutions for problems that aren't really there, by all means subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching.